Hi everyone, it's Chris at Cork and Crown back in the cider shed to try some more cider. And it is cider, not perry. Uh, we're going to try today. Um, uh, we did a couple of like commercial ciders. Uh, did Strong Boar, which I still think is a great thing to try. And uh, Weston's Vintage, which is small and more interesting, but still on the larger end of the scale. Then we tried the Little Pomona from Herefordshire, uh, which is like very non-interventionist um yeah treated more like a wine than than, it, than anything else um and we're going to follow in a similar vein today uh something very low well actually there is some intervention in this there is some intervention in this and the the pomona was a uh, three varietals this is a single varietal so what is it let's grab it so here we go single varietal from Ro ross and Y. Who I'm a big fan of. It's their Dabonet 2018 um, SVC. Not sure what that stands for actually, but they've got this French cask uh, program. This uh, cask had uh, Armagnac in it previously, um, and it says wild ferment. But most of their stuff is kind of wild ferment anyway. To be honest with you, so just the the wild yeasts. Or what or what doing the fermentation you know not cultured yeasts and probably to talk a little bit about that um so most alcoholic beverages commercial on a large scale are made using yeasts which are propagated in laboratories okay so be that for beer for uh wine for uh cider uh, unless you're getting into things like lambic beers which are fermented using wild yeast, or natural wines, which use wild yeasts, or actually non-commercial smaller craft ciders often use the wild yeast which are present on the skins and in the apples themselves to do the fermentation. Now they're less predictable than um, commercial yeasts. If you make it on a massive scale, you want to know that it's going to work because there's so much money resting on it and your profits are so small, you know, basically the percentages are so small, but it's the volume that creates the profit. Um, that you need something predictable that's going to do the same thing every time. And um, this is true of things like cheese as well. Uh, you know, you'll get starter cultures from laboratories. Um, now, the thing about starter cultures or you know, yeasts or whatever you get from laboratories is that they are never going to be as complex as what nature can do. Um, to go back to a cheese analogy, if you think about a cheese like a camembert, like most people's idea of a camembert is something with a nice thick white fluffy rind. Now, nature doesn't do pure thick white rinds. Nature does all sorts of var variety and variation. And actually, camembert uh, used to be kind of like white, grey, mottled, all sorts of different colours until Louis Pasteur isolated uh, um, penicillin um, candidum, white penicillin, if you like. Him and his minions isolated that. And it looked cool, so people started using it. Okay, so you can think similarly to um, to yeast strains and so forth in uh, things like beers, wines, ciders, perries. Um, so if you want predictability, you can go down the laboratory route, but you will probably get something which is less complex than if you go down the natural route. But um, the natural route gives more variation. But that's kind of what's interesting, you know. Uh, the, the, the new vintage is exciting and interesting and there's, there's variation and sometimes you want the same thing all the time something you don't you want to be stimulated and excited and and um yeah that's one of the things that gets me excited about things like cider is that you know every year it's going to be different if you're doing uh, like low intervention practices anyway blah 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 let's have a look at this from ross on why let's crack it open so dabonet is one of the classic varieties, uh, along with like uh, Kingston Black. Um, Kingston Black is a bitter sharp, I think, actually, and this is a bitter sweet. But they've both got an excellent proportion of tannin to acid to sugar that you can use them quite regularly as a single variety. Um, usually, what people do is blend. Though I've talked about this before, but um, not every year will the Kingston Black be a great single variety, and not every year will the Debonair be a great single variety. But um, it's more likely than, than a lot of other um, apples that it will be because of the natural balance that, that, that it has. Um, okay, so here's he. So unfiltered, of course. I wasn't listening very carefully there. I think I had a little spark. Yeah, there's a little bit of sparkle. So a bit pétillant. So a little bit, a little bit of a bot So this was in a neutral um, fermenter for a couple of months. Then it went into the oak casks for a period of time. Then it went 
was racked out of those oak casks and then bottled. So, you know, went through. So there was some intervention there for sure. I mean, stick it in an Armagnac cask has to be, has to qualify as intervention. Uh, sometimes I find these things a bit gimmicky. Uh, when I used to sell beer in the United States, there was a big thing about stouts, imperial stouts, put into um, uh, bourbon casks. <sighs> now, the thing about that is when you get a bourbon cask, you don't actually know how much residual bourbon's left in it. So sometimes these things just taste like bourbon. They were sickly sweet and horrible, but they had a cult following, you know. Um, sometimes I feel it's a bit like the Emperor's New Clothes, that sort of stuff. That don't, you know, less can be more. More isn't always more, if you see what I mean. So let's see if this works though. These guys are pretty good, they've got a good palate, so I assume they wouldn't do it and release it unless they thought it had something going for it. So, you know, I'm on board. Let's have a go. That was a lot of talking before you tried your cider, wasn't it? Sorry guys, what are we on? Six minutes and we haven't actually tried anything yet. Jeez. All right. I can smell that from here. I can smell it from here. So, very slight pitchy on, hazy, no head to speak of whatsoever. So you're getting that um, funkiness, for sure. That farm, funk, earthy character which you get with Ross and my ciders, which I love. I really like it. Not too in your face though, but there's a definite smell of Armagnac. It's not overpowering, but it's just there in the background and it is something that I quite like actually, I have to say. Um, yeah, the, the nose is not overpowering, but it's, it's oh, there's like a sugariness as well. Mm. Yes, yeah, bit of funk, bit of sweetness, also molasses like sweetness, dark sugar sweetness. Hint of apple, not loads of apple though, lots of other things going on. Good nose, interesting nose. Not overpowering, but certainly there's layers to it. Let's try it. <laughs> okay. So, what's the percentage? Let me just check. The percentage on this is 8.4. I'm going to feel good tomorrow. Um, so, light tannin. There is tannin there. There's quite a lot of that minerality that I always talk about. Get a whetstone out of a mountain stream. Lick it. That's the minerality I'm talking about. A lot of that all over my palate. Palette. Um, really delicate tannins. Some of that gentle funk comes through. You get the almond yak though. It's there. It's not overpowering. It's not overpowering. Any more will be too much, I think. But it's just there. Uh, the tannins are kicking in a bit more now. Um, hint of tannin on the back there. So soft tannin is the astringency on your teeth. Hard tannin to the bitterness at the back. But that bitterness is nice. That that feel, mouth feel is nice. Gives it structure. The bitterness balances the sweetness of the armagnac. This is a dry cider, absolutely. But there's that hint of armagnac in there. Almost makes you think of like cocoa as well or something. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. This is probably a bit too cold. In fact, it's too cold. It should be warmer. Sometimes I finish these films and I go away and I keep drinking it and I think, oh, I'm getting... And I get stuff that I didn't get when I first opened it because it's warmed up a bit or the air's got to it and it's just opened up a bit more. Maybe I should open them in advance going forward. Um, mm. hmm. Maybe a hint of very ripe banana as well. And it does not taste eight point two percent. This is a, this is a bit of a brute, you know. It talks quietly, quietly, but carries a big stick. That's what my granddad used to say: talk quietly and carry a big stick. Um, yeah, I like it. I like it. So this isn't like those bourbon barrels I was talking about. This is actually a nice level of armagnac, and I like armagnac a lot. Um, yeah, interesting cider. Well worth getting a hold of, I think. Yeah, nice. Again, Ross and Y. Don't think I've given them a bad review yet. <laughs> I mean, it's I sell less stuff because I love it, you know. So if I'm tasting the stuff I sell, 
you know, I'm going to like it. Otherwise, if I don't, why the heck am I selling it, you know? Um, yeah, interesting. Cool. Okay. So, there you go. That was the Ross and Y. Um, Dominic 2018, French or cask wild ferment. And I like it. So on that note, I'm going to pour myself another glass and carry on drinking it. And until next time, cheers.